Hello, I'm Liz Lumley of Finextra, and today we're speaking to Eric of Nordea, and we're going to talk a little bit about payments. Um, two big issues that a lot of people talk about with payments are digitization mm -hmm. and the next generation of the payment services directive. So, what what do these two issues mean for the for the future of the bank's role? PSD two is is considered a threat to banks because we have new entrants coming in, of course, looking for the profitable part of what banks are doing today, um, but. PSD2 is also an opportunity for banks because banks have been protected by regulators but it has also been a kind of an obstacle in, in how banks can expand their business and how the banks can provide solutions to, to, to clients. So um, I think that we will see a, a, a phase where a lot of new entrants come into the market. Uh, some are successful, some are not. Uh, and, and when they expand their business and expand their value chain, they will also run into similar limitations that banks have faced for many, many years, i.e. Uh, regulations, uh, focus on compliance and risk. And I think some of the players, the entrants that we see uh, very active right now, they tend to underestimate that, that, that banks are not only you know, uh, benefiting from this environment, this regulatory environment, it's also a limitation. So I think that, yes, it is a threat, it is a challenge for banks, but it's also an opportunity for banks to, to be able to act more freely, uh, also from an, uh, from an innovative perspective, innovation perspective. Um, and that's pretty interesting. In order for banks to be able to compete in the new ecosystem, so to speak, uh, banks need to replace a lot of legacy IT. Even if you have one platform across your markets, it's most likely that that platform is too old to fully uh, take advantage of, of the new technology coming our way. That means that you need to replace core banking platforms, payment platforms, probably big data uh, capacity. And, and Nordea is now into a uh, a uh, journey uh, which we call the simplification program where, where we are doing uh, just that. Because we have realized in order to, to increase our uh, cost efficiency and our agility but also to be able to be part of the, the kind of the new ecosystem uh, we need to, to have a platform supporting that. And I think we'll see many more banks having to, to walk that path. So how can technology sort of um, influence the changing relationship between the bank and the corporate treasury? Well, what we have seen uh, for some time now is that treasuries are becoming smaller and smaller, fewer and fewer, and fewer people working there. Uh, treasuries have historically been, been about hedging risks, uh, partly taking part of the funding of the company. Uh, after that, we saw a, a trend where a lot of focus was spent on and is still is spent on working capital management. Uh, what we see now, uh, due to the kind of shrinking treasuries from a, from a number of people perspective, is that they are asking for more and more cloud services where they can, instead of implementing treasury systems and running them, they can, can uh, you know, buy services from the cloud. And, and, and that is a, is a very tangible part where I think that banks need to step forward and help customers to, to, uh, to, uh, to deliver on, on their internal promises, so, so to speak. Because I know the treasuries want to, to uh, spend more time on giving advice to, to the company. Mm -hmm. I met a, a, a large corporation a few weeks ago and they run a big part of Europe with two people in the treasury. And that means that, of course, they need to look for efficiency. They need to look for, for all kinds of ways to outsource or offload the treasury. And uh, where we believe that, that cloud services is, is one answer to that.